Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet and Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Untraceable, a Monero enthusiast and a popular anonymous personality in the Monero community. The two discuss Monero, Elon's understanding of crypto, the difference between a Monero world and a Bitcoin one, information censorship, the recent ransomware attacks, CBDCs, and how privacy doesn't matter until it's too late. Monero Talk starts now. All right. A traceable. Hi. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, it is. This it's, is our... uh, surreal to be in the Monero Topia studio or Monero Talk studio. Yeah, both. both. Right? Yeah. And other things. It's also where I live. <laughs> it's good. Is that yeah. good? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, that's Tennessee whiskey. It's good stuff. So, what brings you to New York? Well, I guess we'll see. What What do you want to talk about? I guess we, we won't talk well, about uh, the New private York things. Is, is Vegas. Uh, so just the first stop, I'm doing a little mini tour on the way to Vegas, where the Monero party is, where we'll hang out again. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Get to meet other members of the community and just hang out with Monero people. Moner Moneristos, or what do you call them? Uh, Monerano, I think is the correct term. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. There was a thread on Reddit that, you know, because it's Esperanto. Yeah. And so where they actually discussed what is the actual, what would you call in Esperanto a member of the Monero community? So I think it's Monerano. Monerano. Mon Monerano, yeah. Esperanto is supposed to be this language that anybody can speak, and I can't pronounce any of the words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no well, wonder you, that you thing can, didn't work. You can pronounce Monero. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Monerujo, I'm still struggling with that one. I think, yeah, I don't know how it is. Monerujo, maybe? Yeah. It, it, to me, it sounds like Spanish, and that's what I thought Monero was uh, mm -hmm. when I first heard about Monero. I right. thought, like, this is a Spanish word. I think that's a great aspect to it, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, and Esperanto itself is really interesting. I haven't yeah. even tried to learn it, but the concept is really interesting. Like when we were in Guatemala and we were trying to talk to people about Monero and cryptocurrency, Sunita would often be like, Monero, like dinero. And then they're like, <laughs> yeah, oh, they yeah. got it right away. It was like, <laughs> yeah, money and then yeah. dinero. So, like, it's Monero. cash. Yeah. So I got yeah. That's, it's, that's actually a great name, Monero, when you think yeah. about it. it. It doesn't have coin at the end. It's not a copy of anything. Right, like right. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. No, it's, it's completely unique. So, yeah, it's actually really cool that it's Esperanto and that it's a unique name in Esperanto. Yeah. Why didn't S? I don't. Do you know much about Esperanto? Like, no, I don't. Did you ever research uh, it? Um, I I read about it, and it's supposed to be like this universal language that has specific rules that is very easy to pick up, and you know, supposedly is the easiest language to learn. So right. Like, and uh, you learn it, and you can understand anyone else, of course, that knows the language. Mm. But yeah, just that it's easy to learn. The fact that it's not taking off. I guess just shows you the power of network effects, you know? Yeah. Like it's not about the best protocol. Yeah. I think it was like back in the 1930s or something, or maybe even yeah. earlier where this guy created the language. Right. And so it's maybe... people are like, no, we'll just use English. And English is like, it's really difficult from yeah. the perspective yeah. of other, right? It's, it is a lot of people difficult. think it's, a, it's not a... the most difficult. I've learned. No, definitely not the most. <laughs> But uh, you know, maybe that's uh, that says something about Monero. If uh, Esperanto is a niche 
niche niche language niche yeah maybe i mean i mean if that's the case if monero ends up just always being a niche never catching on uh to me it still works and it's still doing the job because i'm still transferring value still right. protecting my privacy and uh i mean it makes sense that over time the purchasing power will increase but whether it's to what some people hope that is globally adopted uh you know, people have different views and I'm not so sure that would be the case, but you know. Yeah. What do you think, man? No, it's funny you say the word niche. Cause did you see that article the other day when they were talking about uh, the, one of the recent ransomware hacks and oh, they yeah, said, yeah. Oh, and they, they requested uh, in the form of Monero, a niche <laughs> cryptocurrency. Yeah, like and then that. like my tweet was like, yeah, digital cash is, is pretty, you know, is a pretty big niche. I mean, that's the way I think about it. Right. So it's, it's neat that niche is a pretty large thing digital cash yeah um so i don't i don't see it i see it being uh it, the network's gonna if it works the network is gonna have to be pretty large yeah so the use and what monero does is not niche well i guess in this day and age it depends on the person like so many people don't care about their privacy or their financial privacy specifically so me but uh in that sense i don't think it's niche but in the cryptocurrency space as a whole it certainly seems that way because i don't know monero isn't very talked about you know monero is a a boring thing really it just does its job very well yeah it's a boring protocol which is what it should be it should be yeah. you know in the background it doesn't have bells and whistles it doesn't have smart contracts it doesn't have this and that it just right does one thing very well and that is to be but what bitcoin was aiming to be yeah yeah did you listen to um um uh, uh, Oh my god, I'm, I'm blanking on uh we, we may have to edit this part out for a second. <laughs> no, no worries, man. <laughs> uh, uh what the the super billionaire dude, uh Elon Musk. Oh my god. Uh this we've been drinking a lot of whiskey and, and, <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> a little too much, but uh. um Elon Musk on how he was describing crypto. What you said in on recently. Twitter. Yeah, on no, Twitter. no, no, recently he was he did, oh, on the yeah, video. Yeah, he was interviewed. The, the yeah, viewer. that recent. Yeah. Uh, I only watched half of it. What What was he saying? Uh, well, he was describing it as like an you know um, an information network, right? And uh -huh. so the one that just has the lowest latency and the lowest amount of error is going to be the, like the protocol that wins for uh -huh. this information. Network. So, what do you think about that? I think it's a that's the way I always thought about it as well. Yeah. You know. Um, well, yeah, that the. Uh, most basic thing yeah it's all information yeah. yeah for me i see the one that will allow information to flow in the freest way possible is going to be the one that at least yeah. if not wins is going to be it's it's going to be something that will be there right yeah and here's the thing um uh, i think monero uh even though it's niche or not as known is the most well uh not established but positioned to be the one that allows the most freest flow of information because uh, history is what allows Bitcoin to potentially be censored. And we almost saw that when they had the compliant mining and they gave up because of community pressure or what, what whatever it was. I think Michael Saylor had something to do with that. You know, they, the mining alliance, whatever it mm -hmm. was. And, uh, so they must have, um, they dropped it. But the point is it's possible and I don't think that's possible with Monero. So what they dropped this compliance mining thing where they would censor certain transactions or transactions from certain addresses, but it's still possible. So it can happen at any point in the future. Mm -hmm. So once more regulatory capture and and uh, controls are put in place, then they're ha, now we'll do it. Yeah. And well, that's did you hear Elon? He, he alluded to that, too, because he said one of the potential errors or thing frictions in the network is uh, government intervention mm -hmm. he, no he i mentioned know, i did not watch yeah. this part uh, i think i yeah i don't know I wasn't so he know. mentioned that as you know so he was describing it, bitcoin as the most robust in terms of, of its decentralization so kind of speaking to its censorship resistant mm -hmm. you know 
properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think that's it. You know, I mean, he, he totally gets it. I mean, yeah. I, you know, the, no, no surprise there. Um, I'm really curious. What does he think about the whole entire ecosystem, whatever currency he chooses to look at Doge or Bitcoin, the fact that it's transparent and whether he even considers that to be an issue at all? Because if he's talking, what, what did he say about the, this government intervention being a problem, then this certainly doesn't help that, right. that everything's transparent, right. right? Right. I think he would say um, the transparency adds to the, you know, it gets rid of other error, right? So you always know the transaction is going from who sent it to who they were trying to send it to. And there's, you know, there, there's certainly arguments for the positive side to tra transparency, right? Yeah, there are. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I do see... Like, like we say often, right? Like it'd be ideal if governments were all running on Bitcoin yeah. and then people were using Monero. Yeah, I would I would rather governments use Bitcoin right. rather than Monero. Because, right. well, yeah, I don't think I have to explain why. <laughs> uh, but uh, about Elon, I think his uh, views are still, you know, developing or evolving. Yeah. Because he hasn't... Uh, I don't, I don't know how long he's been paying attention to crypto, but how long he has been publicly mm -hmm. speaking about crypto is not that long. And so he like he's going through these phases that we all go when we first find out about crypto. Right. And so I wonder if maybe eventually he'll arrive at this point where he's thinking about the lack of privacy and maybe that. They well, like I said, or... I think he's already talking about it in terms of error prevent, right? Like that's yeah. a fact. That's something that it should have. Right. Mm -hmm. He's saying it without saying it. He's saying censorship resistance is important without kind of saying it. You know, but then he's talking about second layer, right? He mm -hmm. thinks second layer is the thing. But then he also went back and he kind of talked about ideally, it'd be great if it can, you know, scale on as much as possible on the first layer. Mm -hmm. And he does have a point like. Uh... Uh, I did watch a part where he's talking about something about scaling mm -hmm. and he mentioned how these protocol rules, so the one megabyte limit, I think he said this, he said something like this, um, that these were placed, were set in place in 2009 and technology has advanced a lot. So, uh, uh, I agree with a lot of Bitcoin maxis or not just maxis just bitcoiners in general that um you can't just infinitely scale block sizes and throughput and bandwidth without affecting the, the centralization but what bitcoin is doing right now is nowhere in here right what it's, our technology it's scale can it's knobs that can be turned they, yeah. they created a fixed system and dynamic blocks in in right. monero i mean we haven't seen them in action uh, and i uh I mean, we know for a fact that hardware is is always, yeah, improving, always improving, and the internet itself is always improving in terms of bandwidth. That's like we know that for a fact. So why why does the protocol need to be fixed in terms of its ability to scale? On a, uh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, and there's a, there's going to be a, a sweet spot where not everyone, of course, is going to have the latest and greatest hardware, right. and not everyone that has the shittiest hardware. Uh, needs to be what uh, is the included into being able to run yeah. a node, but most people we would what is what we want to aim for, right? So there's a sweet spot, and uh, I'm not really qualified to speak about that. But what is the general is... consensus in Bitcoin in terms of when they're going to uh, increase the block size? Uh, is it a never, or yeah, like I, is it? I don't speak for no, I haven't been them, following that too well. Like, what is like the main, my... the most mainstream? Uh, yeah, it's never okay. uh, from from my understanding from the sentiment that I see. Um, I just don't see how it's it's all going to go. You know, uh, fees will go up forever. Is yeah. what I uh, hear some people disagree with that, like the Samurai Wallet guys um, or uh, oh, I mean, and uh, layers. Uh, I mean, transactions will move on to layer two. Yeah, but it just sounds like a system that's. Yeah. headed towards 
being seized up and, and not mean, being able if, to move forward. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when you, even if, even if uh, Monero ever does start to become big enough, we should also adopt a second layer, which will be interesting to see. Uh, you know, there is the Paymo, which is a Lightning yeah. uh, implementation sort of for Monero, but I don't know much about it. So I'm wondering, like, does it really uh, prevent metadata leakage mm. and really as private as layer one? Mm -hmm. So, you know, speaking of that, once atomic swaps come. Yes, this was going to just bring could, up. You could kind of, I kind of start to see Bitcoin as Monero's transparent layer. Yeah, two. yeah, 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 yeah. It's Arctic a, Mine, have you saw, did you see Arctic Mine talking about this? Uh, no, I, I have watched the interview yeah. you had with Arctic Mine about scaling mostly. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if, uh, about this atomic swap. I don't think I uh, heard that conversation. I'd love to do a show with him again soon to talk. Well, because one with the recent rise in transactions. Yeah. I'm Arctic, sure you'd have yeah. some interesting things. To Arctic say Mine is that. very knowledgeable. Oh, I, lo I love and, listening to him. Yeah. And then with atomic swap, I mean, he is a Monero. I don't want to, he probably won't like this, but I said, He's a Monero maximalist. When you hear him talk, he's he really sees it as solving Bitcoin's problems. Um, but yeah, he's in my understanding is he, exactly what you said. He seems to be seeing like almost Monero as being the second layer or whatever. It's all relative, but yeah. they're like connected. And Monero is more used more for transactions. Yeah, and Bitcoin yeah. is just you know. Yeah, you know, I, I, I see like Bitcoin becoming. Monero's liquidity layer. So right. um, exchange the listings, like I've tweeted or, or say uh, that it's okay. It's not a good thing, but it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they should be relevant, you know, atomic swaps, decentralized uh, permissionless trustlessness is what we're aiming for. So why should we care other than the temporary price movement when some when Monero gets delisted? It shouldn't matter because the community is responding with solutions to that. And uh, yeah, I think that's the, the way forward. And Atomic Swaps is going to turn Bitcoin into Monero's liquidity layer as well as Haveno, decentralized mm -hmm. exchange. And uh, yeah. what does that look like long term, though? Right. So now you have Bitcoin connected to Monero. Right. And right now they're connected through atomic swaps and the pipes connecting them are, are restricted. Right. They're not, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't allow for uh, endless amount of volume instantly. But over time, you could imagine it's going to become more fluid yeah. to go in between the two. So what what is the equilibrium end up looking like between Bitcoin and Monero? You know, what is the I don't think anyone can say, but I. Uh... Like I can guess that it will start very slow and Samurai Wallet will be one of the major sources of liquidity to start because um, they there's an actual use case and a need for these atomic swaps because with the, do you know how uh, Samurai, oh, you had a conversation with them. Yeah. Toxic, toxic change. Yes, yes. Where you do don't have many options to do to what to do with that. You have sitting in your wallet, the toxic uh, change from yeah. the coin joins because that, that can, take place can undo all the coin join that you did with your Bitcoin. Um, so, I mean, you can trade it. Uh, if you're really careful, you, I have tr traded it to Monero. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be careful not to mix them or not to send them to some place that has had uh, you already your identity you know it's it's, it's dangerous <laughs> it's toxic change and atomic swap solves that so there's a, a i mean there's just people. the fact that toxic change is something that exists in bitcoin what is pointing out the inefficiency in it right it goes yeah. back to elon musk he's talking about the one that has the least amount like this thing literally creates a, a toxic change if you want to use it in the correct way yeah so i think that'll be a uh, the one of the main sources of liquidity uh, people moving there to start. Yeah. I asked him cause Justin had asked me to ask him that question. Like how much, how big a value does he think that is in terms of like how much toxic chain Bitcoin change exists? Well, there's three thousand, you know, the unspent capacity in the whirlpool pool, mm -hmm. uh, is all time high all the time. Like in the, in the past week, at least I see samurai T dev, 
uh, tweeting new all time high in amount uh, of Bitcoin in uh, in Whirlpool. Mm -hmm. So all of that means that this is creating more toxic change. So they're j j probably just sitting there and uh, being unused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once atomic swaps come online, now you uh, it's, you'd be dumb not to take your Bitcoin and turn it into something usable. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like um, like regular users, uh, I'm not so bullish on because me personally, I would be very wary of trading my Monero to uh, for Bitcoin uh, on atomic swaps. Yeah, um, why would you? That's the thing. Yeah. So it's really gonna start but, to affect. But I can see why people would because prices. you'd probably be getting a premium. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to take it at um, whatever the market, current market price is. Right, right. You're going to be making you right. need to be more worth it. It's going to start to show what the true value of Monero is, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. I think that price will reflect what the it, true be, price of Monero is versus Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be really interesting to see if some of these dormant Bitcoin addresses start taking advantage of atomic swaps. Right. Like Satoshi's, uh, <laughs> yeah. What would happen no, then? What would happen oh, in that scenario? Oh my god! That's, I feel like the cover of the New York Times. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, it probably would. <laughs> it probably would. That would be insane. Overnight, but thinking, Monero would just flip Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but Bitcoin. There would be a pretty big shift between Monero and Bitcoin. There, yeah. uh, probably reach some sort of a career. I know Elon says the the most uh ironic or the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. So I don't think there'd be anything more entertaining than that. Uh, I'm curious about uh not Satoshi's coins, but say something like exchange hacks. Right. Where like you're yeah, messing yeah. That, with your freedom whenever there. you try to do something to get rid yeah. of those hacked coins. The 2016 yeah. Bitfinex hack. Yeah. What are some of the famous coins that are that have an eye watching over them? Like uh, well, that the are 20, just... 2016 Bitfinex hack. Okay. And I mean, it's just any future yeah. hacks, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, I don't know what is the reason why they haven't put them through Samurai. Probably because it's still very difficult to get rid of that volume of coins. Right, it's too much. Like, okay, so you have, uh, I don't know how, how much they're actually worth. Let's just throw a number out there. But you got $5 million worth of Bitcoin that's been coin joined. That's not suspicious, right? <laughs> like, you right. still can't right. do, Like, where's all this coming from? You can't from? do anything with them still. I mean, unless you're just slowly getting rid of them. Yeah. You know, sell $1,000 here, 1000 but it's like... Is that worth it it's crazy man these ransomware attack this is so awesome by the way the fact that we're we're in person it right? is it is <laughs> this is a this is a dream come true for monero talk show it's a game dream come true for me <laughs> like we want we put the word out there so anybody if you're ever coming through new york and you want to talk monero you're in the monero community or you're just interested in monero let us know we'll do a live show i think because a lot of people pass through new york at some point they must yeah yeah, you get uh, coffee, uh, <laughs> gratuitous coffee, and some scotch. This goes to the Bitcoiners too. We'd love to have you on the BTC Maxis if you're ever around. Tone Vase, ever want to come by? More than welcome, man. Seriously, he's in Staten Island, or at least that's I know mm -hmm. he used to live over there. Oh, so we we're talking about ransomware, right? Yeah, that was the last thing you mentioned. Yeah, the and that's a big thing that this uh, latest one, the oil company. Saudi Arabia, I don't know the name yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. They didn't even ask for Bitcoin. Yeah. And it was like, what, 70 mil? 50, 50 million. 50 mil. 50 million. Yeah. And no Bitcoin allowed. So what is going on? It's so weird that Monero is just sitting at 26, right? It's like dead at 20. Like, it's just sitting at rank 26 in terms uh -huh. of coin market cap. I think it's so strange. It's just like found uh, a nesting spot at 26 and just sitting there. Meanwhile, it's the only coin that's like growing in adoption. It's, every day it's, it's just the, like real organic use it's just the lion in the bushes just waiting <laughs> it's so but there's definitely price suppression or something going on like with paper monero on exchanges right i mean it feel uh, i don't know i, did I you don't see that like that interview to... he did with the guy who was talking about the liquidity issue in monero what's his name 
Kevin. Oh, that's a new one. Yeah, yeah. I saw it pop up on my notification. Okay. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, he's just a guy that, you know, from the Monero community, he wrote up a, a really interesting uh, Reddit post on it. Mm -hmm. And then I had him on the show and he just, you know, it's he doesn't have the smoking gun to, to really, I think, 100% prove. But there's yeah. a lot of circumstantial evidence there mm. that leads one to believe that Monero's uh, price is essentially I'll not true, not truly reflecting the market yeah. right now. I'll have to watch that, but yeah. um, I personally, I, I don't like to go down that line of thinking that uh, unless there's proof, of course, that uh, just because I really believe or like this certain asset mm -hmm. that uh, they're, they're suppressing it or it's not the price it should be or there's, uh, you know, but um, things change quick in crypto. I mean, the thing is with Monero, you know, it's, it's it would be easier for an exchange to do something like essentially selling paper Monero, right? Because there's uh -huh. a lot, there's like, no, uh, you can't see the, the coins, or... coins moving. It's a lot harder to detect with Monero if that's being done by exchanges. Mm -hmm. You know, so if they're selling Monero that they actually don't have. Mm -hmm. That's why we say take take your Monero off of exchanges. So we're trying to push that as much as we can now on the yeah. show. Like obviously, like, like that's a thing, but we should be pushing that all the time to everyone yeah yeah i mean and then you'll really start to see whether or not yeah. you know things are being uh, manipulated i was having a conversation with uh, someone on twitter the other day and uh i wasn't really satisfied with their response like this it seems like they didn't really put much thought into it it's a check on chain uh, it's one of these uh, bitcoin and decred analyst guys and i'm asking what do you think is the effect uh, on the market of a opaque asset like Monero? Because uh, I think that it would be more organic because, okay, in Bitcoin, you have all these people who are looking at on-chain metrics. Like there's this amount of wallets yeah. uh, holding 0 0.1 or yeah. more, this amount of all, let's look at that, this amount of people are selling, this amount of miners are selling, uh, this amount flowing into exchanges or out exchanges and then that influences other people yes uh, the guy what, well, was, well i i see it as uh you know it create creates um it gives some people an opportunity that have more resources to take advantage of that right so it's less uh -huh. egalitarian than monero it's it's less pure capitalism now now you've created a situation where somebody may have more resources or an advantage and they, they could take advantage of it better than somebody else right yeah and gain that advantage over the network because they have the, they're able to study the information right yeah. better than somebody else yeah yeah um that's the way i see it as being a, a major disadvantage and so the, the non-bitcoin version of that is monero and yeah, I think that's more efficient, right? Because now you're not, you don't have people that are studying the network itself. It's allowing yeah. it to just that, commerce to flow freely. That was my take was that yeah. it's, it's just more organic because this is what the, where I just tried, tried to speak to this guy on Twitter, uh, the, the chain analyst or whatever his, he, Otherwise, it, those has. with the best computing power and algorithm would be able to take advantage of the system the best. So his right? tweet was he was talking about uh, uh, the price was at the range low, so like 30K, something like that. And there was a huge influx of coins being moved into an exchange. So you can tell that because it's transparent, coins were moved to an exchange and it's 30K. So it looks like someone is getting ready to sell a whole bunch of Bitcoin at 30K. So he was like, don't don't trust this. Not exactly his words, but like um, this is probably trying to uh, fake you out or whatever. So that's the way someone's taking advantage is like, yeah, let me make it look like this so that I can take advantage mm -hmm, of people mm -hmm. who sell and buy even lower. And so it's just the way that the market can be manipulated, if you want to call it that. Right. It's just taking some advantage or it's like playing chess. Yeah. Whereas you don't know what anyone's doing on Monero and you just 
you don't know if people are buying or selling except for looking at order books. And yeah, it just seems like it would lead to a more organic price discovery. Yeah. And most importantly, it would lead to more liberty and individuality. Yeah. Right. Like if you really take it to its max, think about a, a Bitcoin world versus a Monero world. It's kind of like the difference between a world where we were able to perfectly read everybody's mind and know what they're going to do. There might be advantages to that, right? Mm -hmm. Like now you're communicating perfectly. Um, like if you're a government, that but would you're be great. all everybody's losing their individuality, right? Yeah. It's like so. The the Monero version, it's everybody maintains their own individuality. They become their own node in the network, and they can communicate freely without you know uh, anybody being able to have an effect by having a, a viewpoint of the protocol yeah you know, that's, and I, I but i mean in its most extreme form you know it, it's it's pretty much like that right as a, the difference between a world where you know you can read everybody's minds and people and one where you can't and people still have like the freedom to to act without others having knowledge of it i see that happening everywhere in the world and bitcoin is just one part of it where like uh censorship you know we had the whether you liked uh trump or not it's the president that was censored on a major uh social media platform and just the uh, censoring of any information that related to covid and is just leading everyone to think one way and that's not a good thing uh but yeah, the Bitcoin is definitely one aspect of that because yeah, you can also completely read Bitcoin. So. Yeah, I mean the scary thing about Bitcoin too is though people think it's the opposite of that. Yeah, and they're onboarding, or at least there are some people right that think that. There are those that know it's not that, but are purposely selling it as being that, and they know it's not that, yeah. and that's just scary because now people are coming. Oh, it's like Alex Gladstein, right? Like where the Monero community is always kind of going after him. I don't know. Are you? Do you participate in that? Uh, I do, but I don't know if he's muted me because the uh, last, yeah. last few times I because he's such a, a hypocritical character, right? Yeah. Like if you really believe in these things that you say you believe in, you should be talking about Monero every single day. And man, the, the we had him on our show. Had, I yeah. watched it when yeah. I was creating that promo video for you. Oh, that was amazing! By <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank You're you welcome. for that promo video, man. Cheer, and, cheers to that. Yeah, you need some more in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should yeah. get some more. I watched that whole thing, and it was so different from how he speaks on Twitter now. Sunita, Sunita, Sunita come on camera. She's staying on. Come She's on. Purposely... <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it was. It it was so weird. Uh, oh no, I still have some. Thank you. It was so weird uh, listening to him uh, because it's so different to how he speaks on Twitter now. Uh, that was a great interview. And yeah, it was revealing. It was before like he had gone it was before totally... he got brainwashed right. by maximalists. Well, it was before it became his advantage to be that right. So yeah, that's now he makes more money or he earns more clout being that person right now. Yeah, yeah, the community is, is bigger. And, yeah, it's uh, like Peter McCormick, right? He's out there talking. He's a BTC maxi, and it makes sense for him to do it. Like, economically, it would be silly for him to start um, talking about Monero instead, unless, you know, unless Monero starts going up in market cap, and then, like, it becomes I, a thing. I think Peter knows how important Monero is. It seems He seems genuinely interested, but he is, to me, sorry if I'm sure he's not watching, but... He seems lazy to dig in more uh, because to a lot of people, privacy really just doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until it has to matter. And like I said, though, but his sponsors and everything, its it just makes yeah. sense for him to stay pure. Yeah, BTC and I mean, next. his show is literally called What Bitcoin Did. And he's right, that's why he's a community that will cancel him if he thinks right. about anything other. Exactly. It's kind of scary to see that, right? I don't. Monero is starting to do that a little bit, right? Because like when, now we have Pirate Chain, right? So we <laughs> like we do that to them the same way, you know, not to not to the same degree because okay, Pirate but... Chain is completely insignificant right now. Um, I am seriously looking for 
an alternative to Monero. Okay. Look, I am digging into these other privacy. Claims. Well, I know you're a big wow narrow guy, right? <laughs> Not big. <laughs> I think it's a good joke and uh, a good test net. You know, they're testing cryptic mm -hmm. and other stuff. That yeah, yeah. Is kind of questionable. But anyway, I'm digging into. So these which ones are claims. you interested in pirate chain? Is that? No. A, okay. No, not at all. Because am I 90 percent? Why are you digging into what do you what's what are you looking for? Um, I think having options and uh, alternatives and plan B's are a good thing. OK. And uh, I think Monero's most well positioned and the best option. But uh, yeah, I'm looking for other things that meet these standards that mm -hmm. Monero has kind of set. And I'm really having a hard time. Pirate Chain uh, mined 90% of their supply in three years. And when you look at Dogecoin, which was a much fairer distribution, like uh, I don't know how many years before they began their tail emission. Yeah. But even then, uh, like over 25% of the supply is owned by like three addresses or something like that. Or maybe it was even more than that. In Doge? Yeah, in Doge. Okay. And uh so imagine what pyre chain is like when for i really years... want to know how much doge i had i won't <laughs> that was that was the first coin i always tell this story that was the first coin i ever bought yeah. before i understood crypto at all but then it took me down the rabbit hole but i had I... a good amount as well yeah uh that's when i first got into crypto yeah and I bought it on Christmas Eve, 2013. I bought like $50 worth of somebody on Reddit. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I started using Reddit for the purpose because I was like doing research. It's like, oh, go on Reddit. And there's mm -hmm. like, oh, Reddit, this is interesting too. I, like, I wasn't even on Reddit before that. And um, went to the Dogecoin community and bought like from PayPal. I bought like, sent somebody $50 over PayPal. Uh, I remember <laughs> when they used to be able to buy Bitcoin on eBay. But when I woke up the next morning, all my Doge was gone. I lost it all because I saved it on an online wallet. Oh, no. Yeah. And it was called like the Doge Christmas hack of 2013. I was like, no. On an exchange wallet? No, it was just an online wallet. It's uh -huh. like Crypto 101. Like, don't keep your crypto on an uh -huh. online. I don't yeah. even know if they exist in any form anymore, right? Because Yeah. Probably not. yeah. Um, but I didn't know about crypto yet. But then I was like, this is so strange. I'm like. So all these people bought Bitcoin or whatever, and it could just be stolen that easily. I was like, there's got to be more to it. And then that's when I started learning about it and understanding the private key and the public key. Mm -hmm. But I, I was like, interest, uh, like Do I was like, well, Doge actually looks interesting, though, because it has all this like momentum. Like it's like mm -hmm. as a, if you were just looking at it as a community, there was energy there in the Reddit, mm -hmm. even from the early days. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this definitely. is interesting, you know? And then so I tried to like essentially... Um, gain Monero, gain Bitcoin. I got into Bitcoin, but I was like, you know, trying to. You were the shit coin trader. For yeah, Bitcoin, huh? <laughs> maybe. But then I lost it all, you know, in, a, in one of those boating accidents. Um, but yeah, those. Um, but I don't even know what like I would I wouldn't even want to know what the amount of Doge was, because it's probably like if I just <laughs> kept that Doge at that. some point, you can't you know about that. <laughs> oh, no, no, you can't. But so, so yeah, anyway, um, back to I'm looking for these alternatives. Uh, Pirate Chain also is not only 90% are already mined in three years, but it also has a finite it's a supply cap. Right. So it's not thinking about the future at all. And like, what innovation is Well, there? you what could, do you do you could tell this 90% pre mine exists because they have this marketing budget. It's like insane. Like, we should, we saw they them have at a, a dev uh, fund, um, dev fee. I, I don't know, this, but, but I just I know like they're, like, they're I can't even they have like a marketing anything. team. So they have there's like people are are spending. So to try but to pump that this would coin. be what I would be most interested in, which is basically Zcash uh, uh, default privacy. Right. Turned on uh, the only Restricted other thing, supply. the only other checkbox that isn't marked is the trusted setup. Right. Uh, which is a pretty big. So, yeah, box. Yeah, it's a pretty big box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, chonky box um but yeah the, what, what else is there 
I mean, I, I that's when I always start to sound like a Monero maximalist because I'm just yeah. like, it has network effect I mean, for its use. So, paths like, what? Monero. No, I'm just saying, like, what privacy coin? If you're looking to buy an alternative, like you said, I mean, so what is it doing that's 10x better? Yeah, yeah exactly. That Monero isn't currently doing or can't adopt. Now, I you sound like a, a BTC maxi at that point, right? Because that's what they would say. Oh, well, if but, it's um, good enough, Bitcoin will adopt. It. I'm really not a, a Monero maxi. I used to be a BTC maxi, um, but I, I can't be a maximalist of anything anymore except for, for freedom and using the correct tools to achieve those goals. Yeah. And I like moment, this, that's Monero. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, I, that's exactly how I like to describe myself too, but I'm also honest with myself. I'm realizing, <laughs> you know, you do... Definitely have a bias, right? <laughs> uh, well, it's out of convenience. Like you said, uh, Peter McCormick is lazy. It's like literally... Yeah. What happens? Your the inertia is towards wanting to stay with this one that you have, right? Yeah, because it th takes energy true. to now move off this protocol to another one. That's the whole concept yeah. of the network effect. So you're you're stuck in this cyclone, right? Yeah. Now I you mean, could say theoretically, well, I'm very open minded if something better comes along, but network effect literally wouldn't exist if this didn't really affect everybody better. in the network. So you're yeah. you're pulled in by the gravity of the network, and it also takes time to build credibility yeah in a network and that's kind of what right. network effect is right, right? so you got to find that balance between you know finding something that has enough network effect and yeah. maintaining the open-mindedness to something new and i that's why i get you know i i understand bitcoin like i was a btc maxi too at one point mm -hmm. so i totally get it but when you look at monero it's like it's it becomes very hard to justify it and yeah. still say, all right, well, that's a shit coin. But uh, like I said, I'm still not a Monero Maxi. And yeah. uh, most of my net worth portfolio, portfolio whatever you want to refer to it as, is still in Bitcoin. And I wish it was more in Monero. And over time, it might become that. But um, it's... Uh, um, Bitcoin is a great complement to Monero. I was going to say it the other <laughs> way around. I was going to say Monero is a great complement to Bitcoin, but I think Bitcoin is a good complement to Monero because Bitcoin can take all the heat of regulation. Okay, Monero isn't safe from that, but it, I think it's better suited to uh, uh, go around it. Hmm. Um, Bitcoin. Uh, regulation. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's doing it right now. I mean, yeah. it's being um, embraced more than anything. You yeah, know, it's, it's the transparent. Like, oh wait, it's, it's, it's we Monero's can trace everything. Layer. Yeah, like it, it doesn't have to be first in market right. cap. It's already working. It's already a success in my yeah. in my eyes. Like I said, that was that was uh, why I ran for Congress, right? So mm -hmm. never see, I wanted to see the real argument take place on the floor of Congress regarding yeah. digital cash, something like Monero yeah. that's untraceable as opposed to the way it always goes, which is, oh, well, ultimately don't worry about it. It's completely transparent. So every transaction can be traced. So there's no concerns. Mm -hmm. And then there's, oh, okay. But the real argument should be, no, there's this other protocol um, that actually works like digital cash. So you won't be able to trace anything, but that perfectly aligns with the ideals of what this country is supposed to be founded upon. So we should all be for it and not wanting to destroy it yeah privacy is just uh, being increasingly pushed as a kind of a negative thing i had a thought you know um to kind of change topics here a little bit about uh things the monero ecosystem needs and uh, as uh, backwards as it might sound uh, I think one of those things is custodial solutions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like companies or institutions who realize how important Monero is and may want to hold it, don't want to do them do it themselves. They want a custodian who's going to keep it safe for them, manage their keys and all this. And yeah, um, I was talking to the cypherpunk holdings guys mm -hmm. on twitter and you remember they had sold their monero at one point in yeah 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 yeah. and they rebought 
Right. And uh, we got to have reasons, them on our show. Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah. Uh, um, I sent you guys over to them. Did that, mm -hmm. anything, anything come from that? Um, I don't know. Did they, they ever respond to us? The Cypherpunk Holdings? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the reasons was that uh, the lack of uh, custodial solutions. Like mm -hmm. if, if a company has to go through an audit or I don't know, it's, it's just complicate things. Right. Where you have a custodian who manages all this for you, keeps it safe. And as a public company, you know, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. as individuals, cake, cake, cake should just do this in addition to having their wallet. It yeah. Also be a, yeah. <laughs> right. Should talk to Vic about that. Vic, let's get it going, Vic, man. Let's go. <laughs> we'll see him soon, right? You're... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll see him yeah. soon. Don't worry. This is, it's not live. So we won't be able to track and trace our coordinates. And... <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm just a body double anyway, <laughs> or a body triple. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things it needs and just general infrastructure things yeah. like node software where you just click and run a thing. I, I personally think running the GUI node is pretty easy. Yeah, no, I love this idea of we talked about this a while years ago too, trying to team up with the guy that was building that Monero box. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. like I think that's a great thing, like yeah. to have if you could like literally just plug and play. It like needs, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Like if I could just buy this thing, plug it into a power source and connect it to I, the internet and then connect it to Cake Wallet, right? Uh, and now I have my own personal node that I'm running off of. I almost bought one of those. Did you try it? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, that's there. There's so many. I don't know. Bitcoin. If, yeah. There's Ronin Dojo. But with Monero, it makes even Monero. more sense, right? There's more of an incentive to want to do it because it literally is adding to your right, improving potentially improving your yeah. privacy on additional. Um, actually, I disagree. I think yeah. Bitcoin has more of an incentive because I can use a remote node and still have really good privacy. You know, there's Dandelion, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is protecting my IP. Right. You know, it's not perfect and it's better to use your own node right. every time. Like that should be the default. But with Monero, you use a remote node and you still have all these uh, privacy protections. Mm. Whereas in Bitcoin, you are more incentivized to run your own node because if you're using someone else's... The difference is bigger. You're, yeah. you're getting a larger yeah. improvement. You're using someone else's node. Not only do right. they now know your IP, right. but they also know what transactions right. your addresses. But the, but the vast majority of the Monero community actually cares about that. Yeah. So that's why there's like yeah, more... The, the there's mindset. probably a higher percentage of users to node runners in Monero than Bitcoin. Yeah, Definitely that, fair that, to say that, that right? That could be... Probably the highest true. of any crypto, I would if I had a guess, there are a lot of Monero nodes, actually. right? Actually, and and when you compare, I, I I really wonder how big the user base of Monero is because you can see that with Bitcoin, yeah. you can see like there's this many new address or addresses, active addresses in the past twelve months, right? But, you know, as your guess is as good as mine for yeah. Monero. And like, is there any other coin that has such a um? A distinct purpose where most of the community aligns with it. I feel like Monero does that very well. Yeah, the mindset. Right. Because is... in Bitcoin, what is really what is its um purpose that everybody agrees on? Just what digital gold? Is that does everybody agree Being on that? Rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's number go up. It's literally yeah. number go up. Uh yeah, the mindset I think of the average Monero user is definitely I need to run my own note. Yeah. I need to be as private as possible. Yeah. Whereas with Bitcoin is, uh, there is a subset uh, uh, of people who are f greatly focused, and it used to be like, a, what is the you know how like companies have their mission statement? Like, what is yeah. the what is the mission statement of of I Bitcoin think versus Monero? The mission Monero? statement of Bitcoin, basically, the narrative is um, to evade. Um, evade uh inflation or debasement of your money mm -hmm. and decentralization control your own money mm -hmm. which is true it does do that but um well in a sense you truly doesn't even have Monero basic miners come on man it's it's not even Monero doing well on the, the decentralization the control, front the control of your own money i would argue that monero does better because 
fully own. So what's your the mission money. statement of Monero though? It's just money. Monero's mission statement is digital cash. Yeah. It's just money then, right? And like I've said so that big, it's... big and Bitcoins is what? Like it, it's you know, I feel yeah. like they really are they're very similar, I feel like. Actually, you were going to yeah. say they're dissimilar. No, I'm going to say they're similar. Yeah, it's just say I... that Monero perfects the formula to me anyway. Because I was like Daniel about... Kim says, Monero is what Bitcoin noobs thought exactly. they bought. So literally, it is yeah. the mission statement of Bitcoin. Like, I think it is. And, yeah. and at the beginning, when I first got into Bitcoin, uh, privacy was a more thought about aspect even though privacy now is better there wasn't coin join and all this uh knowledge about how chain analysis works back in 2013 or you know early then mm -hmm. um but people actually cared more about those things those topics were more discussed i feel like and over time the community has grown to be more global and those those things uh uh, that ethos has been diluted and now is just a much smaller fraction of very great people who promote it, but still a very small fraction of people who actually care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and with, um, I was saying about ownership where owning and controlling your own money, Monero does better because when everyone can see on Bitcoin your transactions and where they're moving and what you're doing, the full transparency, that jeopardizes the control you have over it. 100%. Because you can be persuaded, you can be threatened, you can be blacklisted. So the control that you have over it, you still have control on network level like you send it to an address uh, on the and the node will accept it uh this is an argument a lot of people who think bitcoin is fungible make uh is that my my node treats it as fungible but bitcoin is more than just that it's, yeah it's also a social thing yeah i mean i very i remember consciously making the decision where i looked at bitcoin and monero and i was like listen I was you pretty much moved all over to Monero and I was like, do I care if, you know, it doesn't grow as fast as Bitcoin right now in terms yeah. of, you know, and then it goes down against Bitcoin. And I was like, you know what? What would I, you know, would I rather have millions and millions of dollars in Bitcoin or I'll, I'll also a lot of money in Monero, but knowing that it's completely, uh, unattached to any you know i completely control it right i could use it at will and a lot of that has to do with the privacy aspects that it's yeah even more censorship resistant i mean so there's so much power person and like personal personal power that comes with that that may yeah. not be reflected i i don't see how that ultimately doesn't get reflected in the price but at that point it's not just about it, it takes you know you, having 10 million dollars versus maybe having five million dollars but you can use it in a very fluid way that can't be stopped right yeah and it's um it's not even well i can't i can't speak about i was about to start talking about price um and to me it was an easy decision because i mean just looking at the chart um just the uh, technical analysis wise it, it 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 was an easy decision to put some money into monero um um like it, it's tested like the lows from 2016 and it's hanging out at this range and it, and anyway um i think monero is a great store of value because um a great store of value is more than just maintaining or increasing purchasing power it's also how safe that security. wealth is, security right. and right. safety, and what is more secure, exactly. and and what gives you what protects your wealth better than 
no one knowing anything about it. Right. It's like having gold bars in a black safe. Yeah. And sitting, you know, uh, that nobody can, or in a safe that nobody can see versus yeah. having gold bars in a glass case on your front lawn. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's like burying which, a bar of gold right. that does not react to a metal detector. Right. And broadcasting it to the world every time you use it. Like, just want to let you know, I'm using this, all my money that I have. Like literally yeah, every time you use it, it gets broadcast to the entire yeah, yeah. entire network in a way where they could all see it. Yeah, that's just that's not good security. That's insane. <laughs> when you think about it. Like you literally know when people are making a purchase like, and potentially uh, where, you know, obviously they're they the Bitcoin community is trying to fight against that surveillance, but it's protocol is just so open to it. Yeah, and this goes to show how much the mainstream doesn't really care about privacy because that's basically Venmo. Like you can have your turn. Right. Like, what? What? Why? Well, they we, <laughs> we're definitely moving in the direction though where they're gonna start. Like to Bitcoin care. is Venmo, decentralized Venmo. Yeah. yeah. Is what I know. Is. Venmo is the fact that people use Venmo. I mean, we I use it out of convenience for. I, mean, I do too. For so our, our, right. Too, and obviously, I'm like, well, I don't check, care for these transact. You know, yeah. I don't care. But, but I check it to. Uh, send it privately like what why am i publicly disclosing how much i just sent for this coffee or right. something like that right it's insane <laughs> it's there's a use there right because it's so easy to use right it's yeah. a sliding scale yeah know? but arrows on the other side of the scale where you can't you don't want to go for the most convenient thing no like in in most cases yeah then you're the, the product yeah or, exactly right? yeah. The, in most cases Take the extra step and you are protecting yourself. Right. Which I do think is something that the world world is starting to understand more than ever mm -hmm. before. And right? the thing is that 10 Bitcoin, years ago, like nobody understood that. Like they're like, you, you know. Bitcoin does the the con the well, I wouldn't say convenience thing, but um they definitely have the extra step to being private. Whereas in Monero is big in the convenience of that privacy right so it's, yeah uh, it, you have to take the ex extra step i mean bitcoin is already not so convenient it's becoming more convenient just because of the large infrastructure and acceptance that right. it has everywhere so i guess you could call yeah, it, you get it more cash convenient. app you can get it any you know it's yeah. easy to get yeah and monero will i think get more convenient maybe not but <laughs> no it's definitely, when not, Habeno, definitely. it's just gonna take a lot it's gonna yeah, take time because because it's literally gonna be through it's gonna be through uh improved usership that's built out of decentralized protocols not yeah. centralized ones but ultimately they're they're gonna create apps that i think are just pretty close to the centralized versions right yeah the the atomic swaps will atomic swaps with that thor chain and, obviously it's not having a, Ooh, a great thor time chain. but <laughs> in theory it's it's a step in the right direction you know thor chain what happened <laughs> that's gonna know. that's gonna be a setback for monero getting implemented on there and i'm gonna be very cautious when it does yeah that is probably one of the only other projects i'm interested in right uh -huh. now yeah same uh is thor chain yeah it's it's a needed thing but it really opened my eyes to how decentralized or how permissionless was well, you know they stopped the halted halted the network and i'm glad that these uh, exploits happened because now i can see what is actual what can they actually do with my money if i were to choose to put it on there right 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 like well it's like an audit right i mean it was a in a very expensive audit of the they've had like <laughs> three or maybe even four exploits in the past yeah month. that's pretty wild so well, I mean, it's funny because they're with... saying well, well it's very complicated technology yeah. so that's that's another yeah. thing that you know like we said you pirate chain zcash you know those are also very complicated technologies right like yeah. it's like it's running on you know moon math right people say like so there's there's something to be said. There is a risk there with yeah, these definitely. Uh, protocols yeah, that mean, are a little more, you know, Thorchain is abstract. Is linking six different protocols together. <laughs> so like um, it's gonna take some time before I'm gonna trust uh, any amount of significant funds. I don't understand there. any of this well enough on a technical level to know if it's when it should be trusted. You know, mm -hmm. so 
look to the yeah. others in the community. Yeah. But assuming everything works, uh, I think it'll be a very good thing for Monero. Because, yeah, it's going to be a nice bridge. Yeah, a good, a good bridge. and It'll become more convenient to get. Uh, and also, you'll have people locking up Monero, giving it a use case, and creating a sort of uh, higher price floor because there's all this Monero that's locked up as liquidity. So... Uh, yeah, yo, it's. I think used. I think Eric Voorhees is a big Monero fan at at heart. Have I you think so? Yeah. Have you listened to him talking? Um, a little bit, but uh, I also, you know, when it got delist delisted from mm. Shapeshift, um, I could tell, or from what he says anyway, that is wasn't by his choice, and that if he could, uh, or if it. You know, he 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 would like to have kept it. So I think mm. there was some regulatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On there. We had him on um, from Monero Con in Denver. Yeah, I watched I don't part of that. Yeah, and, I don't remember what. Clips. I think that was right after he had a delisted, or um, I don't it was know, close to that time. But I love listening to him. Talk. He's one of my favorite Bitcoiners because mm -hmm. he's he's not a maximalist. Yeah, he he is probably a bigger Bitcoiner than than you know pretty much everybody else but at the same time he's not a max like he really seems to maintain that open-mindedness to other projects he thinks there's gonna be other things around he sees i like the way he talks about the you know the ecosystem mm -hmm. he just yeah, believes in a, the decentral creating this whole decentralized world i have a, a bitcoin is one piece i would say a neutral view of him but it's more positive than anything yeah because now i mean look what he's done with right now he's created thor he's figured out a way to essentially decentralize his company yeah, he's gone the right path. Yeah, not uh, he he did the KYC thing to keep his business going, or the other op other option is to completely shut down. But he's going the right path in decentralizing it or going in that direction. He decentralized things. the company itself too. Did you see that recently? Yeah, I didn't read into it. Though, yeah, so I don't. I'm not. I don't know. I think. I. I. Yeah. I guess it's gonna run on some other coin, right? It's gonna be like a. Mm -hmm. And right there is the attack vector from BTC Maxi. Is that why you should never use the service? <laughs> right. 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 But it's a direct, it, there's things that make sense there. There's 100. So much you can't use or do as a BTC Maxi. You're, you're locked in. Right. So sad. <laughs> it's like, what are you running away from if you're running back to the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> like it's it should be a world of you know. There are many May the best good technologies points. win. Yeah, there are many good points that they make, but there are many limiting and short-sighted and closed-minded uh, points and ideologies that they because they're overcome by have to maintain. They're too. overcome by greed. You know, yeah. it's like it's just it's the easier thing to do, right? It's yeah. like all right, if we all just stick with this meme, then we'll get to uh, you know riches faster. Yep, That's right. It. That's what it is. And it, that's human nature. It makes sense. Yeah, it does. But I don't think it's. I don't think it, you know. I don't think it's going to actually work in stopping the advancement of other technologies. Like they may, they're like trying their hardest, but it's like you can't. It's like the same as fiat people trying to stop Bitcoin. It's the same exact thing. Okay. So to think that to look at like somebody like. Um, you know, what's, what's the big gold bug? Peter, uh, Peter, Schiff. Peter Schiff, right? Like to look at Peter Schiff and everybody's like, oh, he's an idiot. He thinks Bitcoin can never take over fiat or, t or gold. You know, how could he think that? But then to then have that same mentality uh, as a big BTC maxi versus er the way you see the rest of the world, it's just so yeah. hypocritical. It makes no sense. And um, people are just going to use the best thing for them so right. it doesn't matter what they say in the end the, there there's always extremes and the bitcoin maximalists are on this extreme where they will ignore a tool that will improve their life just because it's not bitcoin and it goes to such an extreme nowadays did you see the whole thing with friar Hass? i think that's his name friar Hass. what was that one he is he was on Stephen Levera, Stefan Levera no. show and he's um I don't know too much about him but is he's one of these extremes where he's advocating for dollar cost averaging and if all the bitcoiners 
he had he wrote this article which is he calls it and I it see. is basically a fan fiction and he's describing the scenario where all bitcoiners in the world are buying this a much amount from exchanges and kyc places and and the uh, bitcoin will be one million dollars within one year and uh, he started to go to such an extreme to call out privacy developers like Samurai Wallet or Ronin Dojo or anyone who's developing any sort of privacy and ad advocates for non-KYC means of obtaining Bitcoin as spooks, as government agents, mm. because they're trying to dissuade you or prevent you from buying Bitcoin. Uh, they want to make it as difficult as possible. Just don't my don't uh, just buy KYC uh, because at one million dollars the government is powerless. <laughs> mm. Like suddenly the government loses all their powers at one million dollars for Bitcoin. Right? Right, 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 right. And he's just advocating for the for something bad. Right. Like, Government is not going to lose their powers when Bitcoin reaches a million dollars. They will just have all your KYC data. They will know how much right. you own. They will. Right. It's, they moved. They moved over to a Bitcoin. more perfect system where they perfectly tax everything. Yeah. Like and okay, it, great. Thanks, guys, for so, making this so easy for us. And it's so ironic that he's calling people who are advocating for uh, less control from government from privacy. Right. as government agents whereas if anything he would be the one yeah uh and uh, his ego is very inflated i think especially after he got on the stefan lavero show i hope mm. i'm saying his name correctly and he's like this important figure now i guess <laughs> and he's just like nah the privacy bros screw them uh it's it's kind of funny and well, what's a, scary is you, you, you can't tell if these people mean what they're saying or if they're actually, you know. <laughs> I, I thought it would be entertaining to create uh, an account like this where I legitimately <laughs> act as one of these, these whatever you want to call them, nutty Bitcoin yeah. maximalists to have some... I don't know. It's it's just funny at this point. Like, do I you think there's some Monero it. versions of that out there? I see some Monero Twitter accounts recently. Definitely. I'm like, is this just like a fake <laughs> thing? <laughs> but I don't to, think like, are they trying to hurt Monero with this? Like, but they're talking about its attributes, but yeah. like in a way where I'm like, I here? think there must be, but it's <laughs> not reached the the point of the, the extreme point that yeah. the Bitcoiners have. Some Bitcoiners, yeah. It's all so wild, man. It is. Look, you're just chilling here. We're ha we're hanging out. <laughs> yeah. We, we, I love the community that it's so global. Sunita and I were talking about this. Obviously, it's global. We're talking about this the other day, though. You know, just like how you you find your tribe on the internet, mm -hmm. and the Monero tribe is just a great one to be a part of. Yeah. And wherever you roll in, you know, any city you roll into, you could theoretically find a Monero person to go. Yeah, probably. With. Yeah. I know there are, uh, and it's not like meeting up with a Bitcoin where it's just like number go up. It's like, oh, I'm interested in liberty. Aren't are you? Like, yeah, I'm interested in liberty. You know, like it's a, it's a better topic. It's yeah. a more broad topic than just. Uh, I, I look at the uh, Monero node crawler website that uh, it's it's a menace uh, put out. Have you seen that? No, I don't there's a. It's it crawls the network and and uh, and uh, it puts all the nodes on a map and there were like uh, over thirteen thousand. Uh, I think the last time I looked or Crypto Grampy, uh, tweeted <laughs> which about is also it. you. That's you. That's also you. Yeah, I'm, I'm all. I'm the entire Monero community. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, there were like seventeen thousand nodes. So. It's cool to see where they're all in, in the world. So yeah, I see. The so wait, how accurate is the? You can't really see all the nodes, obviously, right? Uh, no, there are some that are running through Tor. And right, I would think a lot of VPN. Right, uh, I would think in Monero that yeah. would be a lot of those. Right, yeah, so you can't fully trust it, and even even if there aren't, uh, the map doesn't pinpoint an address mm -hmm. like GPS. Yeah, but it'll be in a certain range, like an area. So, 
uh, yeah, it's 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 um, to see it growing though. You're saying yeah, it's a yeah, beautiful thing. growing, yeah. yeah, and the transaction volume growing. Yeah, yeah, th that that's another thing. Yeah, uh, what is it at lately? It got to forty. Well, like doubled overnight, which seems to be obviously some anomaly. Something's going on. Yeah, and uh, I was uh, and and Seth was also speculating on that thinking did you see that thread i saw i was that, I, yeah, that I it could it. be a flood attack yes yeah, yeah yeah i don't think so but it was really interesting uh to think about it hmm. um and uh but the 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 amount of transactions that it increased i posted about it it basically doubled overnight right let's see in the past 24 hours is twenty nine thousand. So it went back down. Was it? Was it yeah, like went down a little or bit. But okay. uh, for like the past two months, it's been between fifteen and twenty k. Hmm. So at twenty nine k in the past twenty four hours, is still uh, up there. Dude, I can't wait till it's like a million transactions a day. <laughs> I, I was hoping it's gonna happen. It would be cool <laughs> if we did a uh, community sponsored stress test. Basically, oh, a spam yeah. let's see it. Let's own. see how high we can get so it. So we can <laughs> see the dynamic blocks yes. in action. Yes, we'd love to do that because we're always like just shoveling coal into it. Let's <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Yeah, just send uh, Monero back and forth between Monero our wallets, day. and That's... let's just pick a certain I... uh, time window where everyone does it. Right. Is there any reason not to do that? That would be a negative. I mean, we we're bloating up the chain. Break break Monero actions, but. <laughs> I would totally participate in that. That sounds like a... Yeah, maybe we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should. Right? It'd be fun anyway. It's a way to gauge uh, the strength of the community. Right. How many people actually... See, like Bitcoin would never do this. They'd be like, no, uh, why are we going to waste money on sending a transaction? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. With Bitcoin, you're spending a lot more to do these spam. Uh, but with Monero, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. So what do you think caused it? Uh, I mean, we can all just guess because that's the thing about Monero is that it's private. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I mean, know if this is Bitcoin, they'd be like, oh, it's because of that. I was thinking it could be there. It could be the ransomware thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe the trying but, to accumulate yeah. on a bunch of different exchanges or it could just be some large entity that is trying to avoid suspicion mm -hmm. so instead of buying a, a huge chunk of monero from one exchange they're buying small chunks from several exchanges mm -hmm. or maybe they're just splitting up into different wallets or maybe i don't think it's that because it i feel be, like they yeah I it don't could be an exchange just moving their cold yeah. and hot wallets around it could be a lot of things yeah. or it could just be everything at once uh yeah it could be a dark net market activity. Could it be you... people moving their money off of it? Like I joked about it on Twitter because yeah. we've been saying, but in actual reality, do you think that meme is starting to? I but it wouldn't just all happen at once. Yeah, that's the because thing. there was the recent, you know, uh, European right legislation that was that's being discussed. Uh -huh, yeah, right. So that could maybe trigger some people to want to take their Monero off of yeah. exchanges. Yeah, I don't know. It's all just guesses, but. Uh... When you look at the tr the transactions per day chart, Monero has had a pretty um, some kind of spam spam attack makes the most sense, right? It had a pretty this. consistent rhythm. Like it was on during the week, it would go up to twenty k. During the weekend, mm. it down to fifteen k, and it was just like this for a, like the past two months and for a long time, really. But even if it was a spam attack that was trying to de-anonymize uh, people's transactions, or maybe just like testing the network, you know, yeah, it's. Okay. Um, but what's the, that? What's that company that has the patent on uh, tracing uh, Monero? Uh, it's Cipher Trace. Cipher Trace, you know, maybe they're running the some thing transactions. Is that this is the, the amount of transact. Uh, assuming that all these transactions in the past two days are an attack of some sort, is mm. not nearly enough to de-anonymize. -anon any meaningful amount. Or what, what if the ransomware payment has been made and Cypher Trace is trying to help them as a, as a client yeah, and they're running this to try to track that transaction? It's, it's not enough. They would need to spam way yeah. more. You need to own... But they'll just send them a bill like, Look, hey, we tried. So here's the thing. So it was between 15 and 20K transactions per day. Mm. And so 
it's uh, in the past two days, it's increased by 20 to 25 transactions or something. Yeah, like 20,000 transactions per mm -hmm. day got added on top. So they're assuming all those 20,000 transactions are owned by an attacker. That's 50% of the transactions. Mm -hmm. So 40K total, 20K are from the attacker. Right. So 50% of the transactions. Right. And uh, Justin, how do you say his last name? Erhan Hoffer? Yeah. Uh, he posted a chart uh -huh. uh, showing that uh, a flood attack, uh, if you own 50% right. or 60% of the transactions in the all of the network, you're only de-anonymizing at most 6%. Oh, it was, it was that low? Yeah. Okay. I did see you that. I didn't to, think it was that low. You need to own like 95, yeah, yeah okay. like 90, 95% of all transactions in the network to really be able to start the anonymizing transactions. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this could be, I mean, we also don't know if this is just the start of a ramp up. Right. Don't want or maybe, maybe they already business. own a large portion and then when they want to do their, their tracing, they have to amp it up. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it's just so. This is why we need theoretical, cryptic. right? We don't. We don't know. This is why cryptic no. is really important because it's eleven ring signatures mm -hmm. now. So we're they gonna need like ten x that. Yeah, they would need to have much, many yeah, more. Yeah, it becomes exponentially difficult, yeah. more difficult to do. Yeah, they would need to like be having hundred. I I don't want to throw a number out yeah. there. It's going to be wrong but much many more transactions and it gets much more expensive because you have 64 128 ring signatures we haven't decided on which standard to use right but yeah it'll just become much more harder and whatever patent cypher trace has <laughs> I, who knows what it is it sounds like uh, vaporware to me yeah 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 but i wonder how much yeah. they're getting paid from the government like if they have like government contracts already, mm -hmm. they must. I mean, do we even find out if anyone gets that bounty? The bounty would we buyer? find out? Yeah, would we? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah, do they not then publish it? Right? I, you would think they wouldn't want to. I mean, they published the. Well, I guess you gotta let people know that there's a bounty out. But yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting question. Yeah, so maybe Justin knows. He's into that compliance stuff. Right. <laughs> we should be foiling the government though to see. Uh, Look at their contracts. I'm curious if they have uh, uh, maybe like a, these chain FOIA, analytics. The freedom I'm of sure. Our, yeah, somebody's already doing that. Like how how big a contracts are out there for these chain analytics companies? It's a big business. Yeah, yeah. But I don't and it's know. really all governments that are fronting the bill for that. And exchanges, exchanges, exchanges also to have to comply. to meet to comply. Yeah. Yeah, it's creating a, the incentive there is for these chain analytics companies to grow, right? They have the incentive to lobby the government and saying, listen, uh, with cash, it was hard to track and trace, but with Bitcoin, we can do it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to ramp that up, you know, throw us some more money, increase your, increase your budget for, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, uh, change the regulations so that, it, so that, you know, money needs to be regulated more than it has historically. Like the incentive is towards that because that's going to, you know, that's how insiders can make more money. And uh, speaking on on this, like uh, CBDCs, mm -hmm. that's, uh, it's, it's going to be scary. <laughs> yeah, like, I think uh, it's going to be. That's going to be like the end of cash, the end of anonymity and uh, like on ramps to bitcoin itself who knows how they're going to be you know every transaction that you make is going to be taxed on the spot if they mm -hmm, want mm -hmm. when you get your stimmy checks from the government from your latest um pandemic right. relief that's going to be instant it's programmable also, I mean, money that the government can program <laughs> yeah and it's i'm really curious like how much more like how do you compare it to bitcoin which is already fully transparent i mean i guess you'll have like account names it might even be more a bit more private than bitcoin because it won't be published to everyone it'll right. just be published to the, to government. the government right like all your transactions <laughs> at, at, at least my neighbor can't see them right, right? but right. the government has everything. right and that'll be one of the incentives for people to move over to it which is something the government can't do now uh, even though the, the dollar is basically digital, they still have to mm -hmm. get the information from a bank. Yeah. But when they control 
the mm -hmm. money as well as they will control with the CBDC. They don't need to ask right. a bank. They just and they'll put incentives out there, right? Like, oh, move over to this and we'll, you know, give you a certain interest rate, you know, a high whatever. Or yeah. we'll give you yeah. freebies or you'll at get at least at the beginning, you know, probably. a thousand free U.S. Fed dollars <laughs> if you move over now. Right. Like, who's not going to do that? Yeah. They'll be able to push so many people into it. And the people that the people that stand to get pushed into it are those that are the most easily manipulated because yeah, the, they're probably the ones that are most desperate to do. You yeah, know, the direction everything yeah. is going just uh, truly um, increases my confidence in Monero, but also is just uh, just bad as a whole. Like, yeah. Because it's still gonna affect me whether I hold Monero or not. Is just um, it's just a lot of unknowns and it's just a lot of surveillance and control and regulations and everything is just constricting around the individual and their freedom to be free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, I just gotta hold Monero and hope for the best. Well, not just do that. <laughs> always be prepared. Always, always be. Take your Monero off the exchanges. Exactly. This co so what do you think of the coffee, man? It's good? It's really good. Yeah. You can taste that volcanic soil. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We gave you, uh, that's that's some of our older stock. Because I, I personally like to drink the oldest stuff so I can send out the newest stuff. Uh-huh. Um, but this bag that we gave you here, this is this is the, the latest batch. Oh yeah, we were gonna do this deal, all right? <laughs> no, that's that's from us, man. That's oh, not okay. That. But if you want if you want to send uh, a tip to the farmers, I will. please do. I will. I already have, and I will continue to do so. We're gonna try to have. I, I keep saying this, but we actually now, right? Sunita, somebody's coming on. Is he gonna come on? What's his name? Raphael, right? Raphael. Yeah, he's gonna come on. He's one of the farmers. He was the one that was like He's most... coming here. No, no, no. We're going to get him on the show. Okay, okay. That would be awesome. We should fly him up here. Oh, my God. Wait, it's not that, you know, we need to 10x the show. And then we can start doing things like that. If we... <laughs> we, need, we need some more sponsors. You know, I think the live sessions are pretty cool, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean. I haven't done anything other I mean, than recorded, live session, but, but doing uh, it in person live. I really liked it. It's uh, yeah, really cool to be here. Like really, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's so cool to meet you guys. And we'll chill in Vegas. Yep. We're gonna do a live Monero Topia down there on the night of the party. Cool. So I'm sure you'll be joining us yeah, since I'll, now you're you're gonna like it. You know? My body, one of my body doubles would join for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I keep one or two at back at the hotel. <laughs> go They're like, hey, you go, <laughs> dude. Your meme game and your Twitter game is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. You're un untraceable. Now yeah. it's good. Yeah. You got skills. So like the that video you made for us, mm -hmm. um, we should play it right now. But I guess we don't want to disrupt the. Like that was so good. Put we, it at the end. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it at the end. So you do you have where did you learn how to do that? Like is that just a little um, side hobby? yeah yeah it is um i used to do youtube stuff okay and you have an eye man you're you're you're, you're yeah, if you ever wanted i know you're already like doing the crypto thing you don't need yeah. to but you could you could do well even in just like the marketing and uh video yeah, production if, you have a good eye for that if there's something i would do i i feel like it would probably be something like did that did you make I the monero like, matrix video is that you no no oh who I is did, who made that i if it wasn't Gionic, it wasn't. He said it wasn't him. Ah, uh, okay. So it was someone on Reddit. I think he actually mentioned who it was, though. But no, I don't. I don't know who it was. But that one's good. I made I love that the. One. I made the. Maybe you need a Monero. The, the just clip of, uh, of Sailor, mm -hmm. and then the the other one, the. I don't even know what I named that other one. <laughs> <laughs> It just has a well. Our Monero of... talk promo video came out so good. Yeah, you're, it's like you're so great. It was, yeah. that was fun to make it. it. Like, we were like, wow. yeah. <laughs> and then the gratuitous one, if you could work your magic uh, there. I'm I'm trying. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about because yeah. uh, the footage the footage was good, but just the the way the guy originally uh -huh. edited it, it just we didn't like. Yeah, 
I'll see what I can do. Yeah, see what you can do. We'll talk about some <laughs> ideas here after the show, maybe. <laughs> so what else, man? Oh, did you know our long-term plan with Gratuitous? I'm sure you've heard us talking about it, right? Um, to, to have more products than yeah, we uh, want we want to partner with existing brands, right? Mm -hmm. So right now we're just doing the coffee, we're doing it ourselves, and we're making a little money off the coffee sales, but. We'd rather kind of move in the direction of teaming up with existing brands mm -hmm. and getting them to add gratuitous to their product. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so what do you have in mind? Like, te like the... tequila, right? Like, so tequila is what ah. mezcal actually. We, oh, we started yeah. investigating I that. See that on the website. Uh, we talked about tequila years ago, but now we're actually looking into mezcal and talking to people. But like the idea is we'd find a decent brand that has good distribution, right? Mm -hmm. So it's already exists as a product, people are buying it. And then they would add gr the gratuitous concept to it. And we'd mm -hmm. go to the farm where they're sourcing their agave from. And we'd hook their farmers up. That's cool. Um, I'll yeah. Buy some, uh, but I think it could gratuitous. help Monero grow, right? Because now yeah. people start coming, like maybe they just drink that tequila. They don't, they obviously they've heard of crypto at this point, but now they're like, oh, tip the farmers with crypto. Next thing, you know, it's a good way to organically get it in front Picked of up on this tequila what's, what's, what's this monero <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, i think yeah, it's a good idea that is, it is a good idea i always think of ways to like try to grow monero you know is, other than the dark market where it's yeah, being used i really appreciate what you guys are doing with gratuitous because we need more normal uses for monero more services more products right exactly because the darknet markets and ransomware that's a good litmus test of how useful and how well monero is doing its mm -hmm. job but then there's no the normal people who are not hacking companies and who are not wanting to buy drugs and who just want some coffee who just want to buy their vpn subscription who just want to, to pay with yeah to want to live on monero right and i've do, been doing a lot more of that lately you know i traveled here on monero Travala. that's awesome man. i paid for where i'm staying with monero i love it i'm here purely on monero yeah i love it that was like us at pork fest but every day is pork fest for you you're living it you've yeah. you've arrived you've yeah. so traveling is you live in monerotopia <laughs> yeah. so traveling we visit is every now way. and then you're living there permanently traveling is one way that currently it's pretty easy to spend Monero, but that mm -hmm. needs to expand to other parts of life. And yeah, I, get I mean, my it should be New York. Guys. New York should theoretically, if if thing if reality actually reflected what people think it is, New York should be like the place that where Monero takes off, right? It's like mm -hmm. when you that's like what New York's all about. It's about like free the free flow of commerce, mm -hmm. but it really isn't that anymore at all. But like, you know, you go to a lot of people like accepting cash around here still, you know, mm -hmm. all the Chinese restaurants, a lot of restaurants actually accept cash. They should all be accepting Monero, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously it's chicken and egg problem. Especially the smaller um, mom and pop yeah. shops. But yeah. Like if you accept cash, you should yeah. accept Monero. Because yeah. there's a lot of like cash only places. And uh, it just takes some explaining because like even with Bitcoin, people are hesitant and it makes, I don't know, you just really need to kind of like understand it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. you're getting into, like the regular shop owner is then just going to be like, yeah, let me take this thing I've never heard about. But over time, I think... It no, it's happen. definitely changing, man. Because people yeah. they see value in crypto now. They're like, "Well, I don't really get it, but yeah. my understanding is if I just hold on to some of it, it might be worth something." Yeah, in the it's future. definitely helpful that crypto's in basically in the mainstream now. Yeah, exactly. Like before, you'd have to explain this alien technology concept, and then a specific one. But now, like, okay, I know what crypto is. Why? And then it's easier to explain why Monero's important. Yeah. So yeah. What do you think of this? This is a pretty, uh, I, I'm always thinking of like what I think are creative <laughs> creative ideas to help Monero grow. Uh, like a s secret menu. You know, like you go to some places and you can order the secret item off the menu. Or you can only do it with Monero? Yeah, you can only do it with Monero. It would create an app, right? 
and just get and then you go around and you sell this concept to different restaurants and oh. say will you are you willing to add a product to the secret monero menu <laughs> And you know, it's not like they're gonna have like a million transactions a day, but people yeah. will walk in because they're gonna want to. So it gives provides a use case, right? So maybe you're not a big Monero person yet; you don't really get it. But if you want access to the secret menu item on, at various different places, uh, now I don't think that's such a good, good idea, okay. especially because Monero is, as we some people describe, niche. But I think it's very possible there comes a day where Monero is more in the public eye. And I'm glad yeah. that day is not now. Bitcoin is well, it would help bring Monero. it there, right? Because people would learn yeah. of the secret. But you I know, think... there's like, um, I'm sure you've seen these at places, right? So there's like famous change where you can order the off the menu item. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. But I think there is very real possibility that that day comes with CBDCs and, and privacy issues and hacks and all this. And um, Monero has its own pretty strong network effect, but it's within mostly people who already know about crypto. Um, yeah, yeah, so, but yeah, I, yeah. But I think that eventually expands. Yeah, I just try to think of like ways that like would give somebody the incentive to yeah. want, right? Because there's really no incentive to use crypto when you go shopping right out in the real world unless it's like saving you money yeah. and even then it's like 10 percent. well like that's shown to not really be enough overwhelming of a drive to be like okay i'm going to use this other payment method you know to save and you know, obviously if it's like 50 percent, sure um but with bitcoin that hasn't really happened yet right it's not like that was part of the original it's not we're not really there yet where like it makes sense there's an incentive to use bitcoin versus credit card or cash you're saying there is or there isn't there really isn't yeah there they're is. absolutely in fact it's the opposite right they've yeah. said all right no it's digital gold don't use it there at all never use it don't send it yeah there's um, an incentive to just hold bitcoin right so you got to create these like initial incentives to use monero obviously if you need to use it in an untraceable way sure but what is that really currently being used for you know dark web dark market stuff I right think probably so. just the incentive might be to offer a discount to to use Monero, mm -hmm. but uh, that's also counterintuitive because well, there has to be an incentive from the, the side of the yeah. the store owner. So it's got to be like, all right, because there's so many people that are dying to use Monero. If I offer this, I'll get more business. But that's not really the case. Yeah, it's not like if some if some business said tomorrow, oh, we accept Monero. It's not like twenty people are going to show up the next day and be like, yeah. I'll buy a hamburger. So it is a chicken and egg. I like the also the idea of giving change in Monero. I've talked about that a few times. I think that's so flipping it on its head. Mm -hmm. So you can go to any bodega or restaurant. You know, we do a gratuitous, right? You could buy our coffee if you sell it on the street. We haven't done that in a while, but you know, let's say we sell a cup for four dollars. Somebody gives me a ten dollar bill. I'll give them six dollars change in Monero. Have people done that? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've definitely gotten people to do that. Because I was like, I'll offer them. I'll say, would you rather have your change in cash or Monero? Yeah. And like, all right. You never know what that's going to you know, turn into in 10 years from now. They're like, all right, I'll do it. You know. So that's a good incentive. So if you had uh, restaurants doing that, and then also that person's effectively getting it in a true peer-to-peer -peer KYC free way. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's like, how are these restaurants and establishments getting the Monero? in the first place to provide the change. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult thing. Like, um, that's why I, I think what you guys are doing with gratuitous is, is uh, so good because, um, you're giving it directly to people who can benefit from it. Um, and it, it's the incentive you're giving is to people who are already into Monero. So it's an is it easier choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I can spend this. I want to spend this. And in turn, it's helping other people, the farmers, to uh, learn or um, get involved yeah. in, in Monero. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things we want to do is go back down. So go back to Guatemala, to Antigua, uh, and then maybe get a couple of the local stores that the farmers would shop at, get them to agree to accept Monero. Like something like start to try to help build an ecosystem in the in the little town itself 
So now not only they just hold like they have the private key, they're just holding it. They don't really know how to use it, but now make it where they have an incentive to actually go maybe use it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think most people will seek out and learn about it naturally. Mm -hmm. And we just need to keep doing what we're doing, uh, you know, promote it when we can or give incentives to to use it when we can. But I think it's just going to be a, a natural progression that because the need for, for privacy, for financial privacy is only going to increase over time. I, I said a lot of people don't care about it now, but it's always increasing the amount of people who do because once you do care about it and you see why it's important is not like how you go back to not caring right so there's just going to be more people who are waking up 100 percent. i think and i think like the cbdc's are gonna like because they'll look at china they'll look they'll people. look at china coin right and yeah. so you'll have the the u.s government itself be helping to spread that meme right because they're going to want to attack it they're going to be like nobody should use uh, china coin because all they're going to do is track and trace everybody and they'll be like yeah and they'll be like wait how about can you also do that with US Fed coin? Oh, well, yeah, you technically you can, but we're not going to be doing that. China. We're not going to be doing that here. <laughs> and then everybody's like, oh, I don't know about that. And then there's like, well, this other thing called Bitcoin and Monero. And people are like, oh. So, I mean, it's going to, people's eyes are going to be open to it. We're definitely yeah. moving in that direction where it's going to make, people are going to have the re, like real world reason to be like, I need digital cash yeah the cbdc's are a really bad thing but i think is going to open a lot of people's eyes when it happens because people are just going to start thinking about it right because exactly. this what is this new thing like, people like cash they like on? the idea yeah. of cash and once that gun is yeah, gone too you, this is all speculative but like i could even see like a sort of social credit score like china developing oh yeah because now you have all the systems in place to really have an effective thing where, where we can even see what you're doing with your money in right. real time. Right. And, and that goes back to Bitcoin too, right? So chain yeah. analytics companies are currently being hired by governments, yeah. but what's to say they're that's not going to make sense for other per Like we're saying, it gives advantages to those with resources. That's what I'm saying. You're going to get rid of cash and implement CBDCs. So people are thinking like, wait, right. the government can see in real time what I'm doing with my money. And people are like, just use Bitcoin. But like, okay, yeah, yeah but yeah. wait, how is Bitcoin different? Now everybody can see. <laughs> now it's created a free so, market where yeah, anybody who can analyze the chain the best. I, I would wins. rather CBDCs and all these uh, increase in censorship and surveillance just not happen, mm -hmm. but it is, it will open people's eyes, I believe. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. just going to be a, a, a natural progression and we're just early. <sighs> well, listen, man, uh, we're going on a, Almost, we're at an hour 45. Sunita is nodding her head yes. Wow, she's really? Been very, <laughs> she didn't want to come on here. I don't know why. Sunita, you want to pop on for the last? She's saying, <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to tune into Monerotopia for that. You, you, you're not going to get it on this on this show. So, Well, I had Dude. a great time. And uh, you can hang out a little bit more, right? Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah I, I, I think I will. Um, I'm hungry. Maybe we can go. Yeah, we'll go get some food. All right. All right. Let's call it a day. Bye. <laughs> thank you for joining us on this week's episode we release new episodes every week you can find and subscribe to the show on itunes spotify stitcher google play youtube or wherever you listen to podcasts and if you have an alexa device you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the monero talk podcast go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen if you want to interact with us guests or other podcast listeners you can follow us on twitter and please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.